the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, uh, Otsumba Adini Adibayo, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Bank of Industry, Mr. Olukayo de Equito, the Managing Director of Procter & Gamble, Nigeria, Mr. Adil Farhat, Executive Secretary, Nigeria Investment Commission, Ms. Yewande, uh, Mrs. Yewande Sadiku, Senior Vice Chairman, Africa Standard Chartered Bank, uh, Mrs. Bola Adishola, Chief Executive Officer, House of Tara International, Mrs. Tara Fela Durotoy. Uh, all the panelists, honored guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. It really is a great pleasure to be with you this morning at the Procter & Gamble Bank of Industry SME Academy. Let me begin by thanking uh, Procter & Gamble and the BOA, BOI for the invitation to speak to you all today and also for investing in such a necessary event. Uh, this administration is, as you've heard already, uh, very extensively uh, 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 from the um, Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, is determined to support small businesses because we know that this is the way of growth and prosperity for our people. And that support is now even more necessary in the wake of the economic downturn caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's exciting to see uh, and very encouraging to see private sector partners who are just as committed to, to doing the same. So the federal government believes wholeheartedly that SME, SMEs or uh, rather MSMEs are the bedrock of our economy. And we are constantly aiming to support innovative ideas and interventions that can help uh, MSMEs grow and in turn grow our economy and create more employment opportunities. I'm often in a position such as this where I'm asked to speak to business owners and entrepreneurs about the value of their businesses to the economy. At such events, we often remind uh, the business owners uh, that according to the National Bureau of Statistics, MSMEs contribute 48% of national GDP. They account for 96% of all businesses and 84% of employment. We also remind them that there are about 17.4 million MSMEs in the country, accounting for 50% of our industrial jobs and nearly 90% of all jobs in the manufacturing sector. And I could go on and on. But today I want to go beyond those statistics. Indeed, I'd like to unpack some of this data with the aim of explicitly highlighting the significance of the assertion that MSMEs are, are, are indeed uh, the, the, the bedrock of the Nigerian economy. While I'm aware that this event relates to uh, the, an MSME academy, you may have noticed that I'm choosing to refer, of course, to MSMEs, and this is deliberate. Of the 17 million odd MSMEs that we have in the country, 99.8% of them are classified as micro enterprises. And micro enterprises employ less than 10 people and typically have assets valued at less than 5 million naira. Enterprises that employ less than 50 people are classified as small. And those that employ between 50 and 200 are classified as medium enterprises. So if 99.8% of our MSMEs are actually micro businesses, a number which I imagine could be higher still, given the size of our informal sector, then we cannot afford to drop that first M in the MSMEs, especially not in a conversation about their importance for the economy. And one of the things that I, that, that, that I want to, uh, uh, to say, you know, uh, in addition to this, is that entrepreneurs with the lowest turnovers are the most vulnerable to economic shocks, like those that the pandemic has endangered, and we must support them. Allow me to paint this picture even further. An overwhelming 76% of micro-entrepreneurs only have secondary school certification, or even less. So we can assume that most of the business owners in our economy are not necessarily sufficient, sufficiently exposed to formal education and are likely experiencing sizable skill gaps. While increasing access to and improving the quality of traditional education is important, 
events such as this one and programs such as this one offer an opportunity for business owners to acquire skills, especially vocational and management skills, that may otherwise only have been available through traditional education routes. But, I'm, but I, I just want to mention here, you know, and many are familiar with the work uh, that the Bank of Industry supported, uh, uh, which was uh, the government program called the Government Enterprises and Empowerment Program, under which we had the trader money scheme, uh, the farmer money scheme, the market money scheme. One of the very interesting things about that scheme, and again, uh, the Bank of Industry uh, deserves all the commendation for uh, the organization of that, of that entire scheme and, uh, and also the enumeration of the very, very many uh, petty traders who are involved in that scheme. But something that, that the trader money scheme showed us, first, is that that bottom of the pyramid of, our, of, the, of the commercial value chain of the trade and sales value chain in Nigeria is a crucial part of the entire equation. So these, are, so these traders are those who have, uh, who have their table tops uh, or who carry their wares around in, in, um, in trays. Many of them are the last mile uh, traders for uh, fast moving products such as the ones that Procter & Gamble uh, manufacture and several other uh, major uh, fast-moving product manufacturers. So these, uh, mic these micro-entrepreneurs who are traders and who are petty traders, some of whose inventory does not even exceed 3,000 Naira, you know, are the ones that were targeted by the, uh, by the government and the Bank of Industry in that trader money scheme. And we found that it was, it, it was exceedingly empowering for these uh, small entrepreneurs, because they were able to receive credit to, to continue to do their businesses, and when they paid back the 10,000 Naira, they then got 15,000 Naira. When they paid back 15,000 Naira, they were able to get 20,000 Naira, and incrementally in, in, in that way. The, 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 the most fascinating aspect of that, uh, of that program was the fact that there was, a, there, there was a really a very high uh, a rate of, 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 uh, of, of uh, fidelity to the, uh, to, to the agreement to pay back. Many of these individuals actually uh, paid back, and many were getting the second tranches of their loans. I think that one of the very critical things that we have to keep examining and keep looking back at is how to continuously empower that last mile, that bottom of the pyramid, in, 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 the trade, uh, in the trade chain. And I think that uh, schemes such as the Trader Money and other such uh, uh, programs, including those that are sponsored by the private sector, deserve every push and deserve every encouragement. But thinking beyond just this event uh, as a government and as policy makers, we must take factors such as this into account. We, if we are convinced that MSMEs truly are the engines of our growth and uh, of, of the growth of our economy. One of the most important granular details of our data on micro businesses, however, is the fact that when we look at micro enterprises, the area where we have the highest skills shortage is in information and communication. The irony is not lost on me that I'm sharing this on a Zoom call and in an era where so much has been forced to move online. It's an extremely important consideration if we genuinely believe that these kinds of businesses are the bedrock of our economy. How do we continue to offer accessible opportunities for micro-entrepreneurs to upskill and to close these sizable skills gap, gaps that are preventing their growth? As the private sector, as business owners, who do, who do have the chance uh, to be at such an event and invest in your knowledge in this way. You know, so, so, so the real question is how to reach the largest numbers, many of whom, of course, cannot participate uh, in a Zoom call for, you know, for, for obvious reasons that uh, they, they, they simply do not have uh, the facilities to be able to do so. But it's possible to translate a lot of what we have today and a lot of the programs that we have into, uh, into um, formats and, and into platforms that are more easily accessible to the largest numbers of, of our people. And I'm sure that this, um, 
way of actually being able to retail uh, this um, uh, trainings further to the to those uh, lower levels is something that uh, the BOI Academy, uh, the BOI and uh, PNG and BOI Academy uh, should take a good look at, and I'm sure that they can come up with all manner of uh, very creative ideas on how uh, to reach that last mile with these very uh, useful trainings. I implore you not only to maximize the learning opportunities uh, that come with this program, but also to find uh, other ways uh, to share what you learn with those who aren't able to be here. This means that as a government, we also have to get creative about how we engage our nation's most vulnerable businesses, especially given the current crisis. Our economic sustainability plan, as you know, sets out a number of ways uh, to do exactly that. Uh, and uh, we've already heard from the Honorable Minister about uh, the Survival Fund offering payroll support to small businesses in order to safeguard at least 1.3 million jobs and offering interest-free credit for daily paid and self-employed artisans. Almost 50% of micro-businesses are owned by young people, Nigerians under the age of 35. So it's encouraging to note that young Nigerians made up 82% of payroll, of payroll support scheme recipients, and they have reported that uh, for the first time, and they've reported you know, that uh, for the very first time in a long time. Nigerian MSMEs are satisfied with the transparent and seamless implementation of this federal government scheme. And this is evident in the reopening of the registration portal, where at the beginning of the scheme, due to you know, the sort of skepticism that generally uh, tends to attend these sorts of programs, the portal opened for six weeks, and we received then 463,000 applications. But once the implementation of the scheme began and the portal reopened, within one week, we received 892,000 applications. The whole purpose of the fund, as you know, is to ease some of the effects of the pandemic on our economy's most vulnerable businesses. And we received an impressive number of testimonials uh, from beneficiaries. The payroll support, uh, as you've heard, uh, pays business owners between 30 and 50,000 naira. Uh, to some entrepreneurs in attendance today, this may seem uh, smaller than you personally may have hoped to receive. But I began this speech urging you to consider the perspective of micro-enterprises, which make up 99.8% uh, of our nation's millions of MSMEs. And yet their size makes them so vulnerable to economic shocks. Uh, consider that perspective. In conclusion, it's essential for us to acknowledge how important MSMEs are, uh, and we have, uh, and we continuously do so. But in order for us to effectively target our efforts in their growth, uh, um, and in order for micro businesses to become uh, small, for small businesses to become medium, we must approach this data with some nuance. To the entrepreneurs who are here today, I hope that this has put into context the value of the opportunity that this SME Academy is. Once again, let me thank uh, Procter & Gamble and the Bank of Industry for ho hosting this event. They've shown consistent commitment to our local talents and the broader SME development in the country. And we are truly appreciative of all their efforts. I hope that you all enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you very much. God bless you.